Hello, BookTube. Hello. So, this is Becky. This is Scott. And tonight we're coming to you with a, uh, a book haul. Yeah, we had a huge book haul just a little while ago. <laughs> we uh, went and spent, what, two hours? Close to two hours, I would say. And half price At half price books in Marietta, Georgia. Uh, which is a really nice half price books. Um, when we first walked in, I didn't, didn't know what to think. We'd been there before. I think just once before, though. Right? Yeah, I think it's only been once. Just the one time. And uh, we were a little disappointed last time. We didn't come out with all that much. But our tastes have changed over the years. Because we haven't been in a, probably, what, four years, five years? Uh, went back this time, found a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, we just, well, first off, first thing I want to do is I want to show you um, something I added to my TBR. And I wanted to show you that first. I added to my TBR for February. I'm about 100 pages in. And it is uh, The Last Samurai by Helen DeWitt. I know a lot of people say this is one of the best books written um, in the last 20 years. And I'm, like I said, I'm about 100 pages in and I love it. I mean, this is a crazy piece of writing. I've never read anything like it, even though the cover sucks. The cover is really kind of awful. The cover is terrible. It's, it's like a wonky view of a subway. Yeah, makes no just makes no sense to me so far. I mean, like I said, I'm only 100 pages in. But either way, that's an, uh, that's an ugly cover. But the book itself is just amazing. Um, I, that's, that's one book I paid full price for. I've been wanting to read it for a long time. Even used, the book was kind of expensive, uh, especially the second edition. So I, I just went ahead and bought it, bought it new. Um, yeah, I haven't, but I haven't I will, added anything. But I will come back with a, um, with a review when it's finished. I like it a lot so far. Excellent. Yeah, and I, I think we're going to do uh, a couple of reviews on Sunday uh, yeah, of, of things so. we've read in the last month, which which will be fun because I'm going to talk about Abandon. Blake Crouch. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it's, it's not Barty Crouch. It's Blake Crouch. And oh. So, all right, you want to start off what we uh, what we found this evening? We we both have a lot. Yeah, it, what you can't see on camera is my books are right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has three stacks over here. It's great. Um, so when we went to half price books, I obviously tackled the the mystery section uh, because I'm on a really big, heavy, co uh, cozy mystery kick right now, which is is just totally belied by the fact that I'm reading a Jane Austen book. But anyway, so one of the first books I got was a uh, uh, murder at an Irish wedding by uh, who's this? Carlene O'Connor. I actually have the first book. For this, this is number two. Murder in um, an Irish Village, I think, is what it's called. No, Murder in an Irish Wedding. I'm talking about your first one, I think, is oh, Murder yeah. in an Irish Village. Yeah. yeah. But I actually have the first of this series. And I've been trying, I've been diligently trying to get the first two books uh, of any series that I buy. Because I know that once I read the first book, I'm going to want to read the second one. And I've, I've been, in the past, I've just been buying the first in the series. And, and then I get stuck without the second book, so it's frustrating. You want well, to go? No, go ahead. Take, do a couple more. All right. So the next set that I found was, <laughs> it's a, a, it's a, a Meg Langslow uh, series by Donna Andrews. That author name sounds really familiar to me. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, maybe, maybe she maybe she writes something else. But each of the each of the books in this series has a bird in the title, and it, it cracks me up. But I found the first, third, and fifth book in the series, so I have to find the the second and the fourth books because I just know I'm going to love this series. I just know it. I like I, I really like the synopsis on the back, and I, I read the first uh, the first paragraph when I was standing in the the bookstore because that's what I do when I go to a bookstore, and I really really like the way the author writes. So I'm I'm really looking forward to these. Yeah, those look those are pretty fun, especially for animal lovers like us. <laughs> All right, so I'll I'll uh, start with a lot of my um, trade paperbacks that I got. I got some trade or some mass markets. I'm sorry, and I'll do the trade paperbacks next. I didn't get any hardcovers tonight. They were, I don't know. I I don't care that much for hardcovers. I prefer trade or mass market paperbacks. 
Um, but the first one that I, that I found as I walked in the store was Dandelion Wine by Ray Bradbury. Um, I just gave a copy of this away to a friend who had, who had never read it, and this is a replacement. Um, so I, I thought it was in really good condition for, for the age of the book. It it's has a really awesome cover. Too. Yeah, it is. It's a great cover. But I've, I've liked all of the Dandelion Wine covers I've seen, um, and I am a huge Ray Bradbury fan. So uh, The next couple are Star Trek novels. I found a couple that were in really nice condition that I don't own and that I haven't read. Uh, Becky and I both like the Star Trek novels, but I read a lot more of them than she does at this point. Oh, I think the last Star Trek book I read was Tears of the Singers, and I'm, I think they might all be ruined for me after that one. Yeah, that was so good. Was yeah, this is number 16, so this is an older one. Um, uh, I think they came out every month or every other month for years, and uh, that was before I was reading the books, of course. You know, I'm not... I was I was very young when this happened, but and then I got number 57 called uh, The Rift. Um you see Kirk and Spock on the cover. I love that cover. And that actually looks like uh, one of the... That looks like the uniforms from one of the films. I'm not sure which one that is. Maybe two or even Star Trek... Yeah, it would be Star Trek The Motion Picture. I believe it would be Star Trek Two. I know and they were wearing those those uh, uniforms in the... I think it was number four, the one where they went to find the whales. Okay, yeah, maybe, maybe that's what it is. Because I believe that was an eight, movie came out in 86... 85 or 86? Oh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. That, 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 that half-price book had kind of a, a, a rough selection of Star Trek novels. Yeah, not a great selection. They had a few. They had a really bad selection of Star Wars novels. I, I did not walk away with one, which is unusual. They probably had 30 or 40 Star Wars novels, but they were all either Star Wars novels I had or Star Wars novels that were... Uh, Part of series that I just don't care about. And they had shelves upon shelves of hardback books. Yeah, they did. And their hardcover books were a little expensive, so yeah. we stayed away from those. Um, then I got this one right here, J.D. Robb. Um, this is a first, Naked in Death. This is the first of a series, uh, Eve Dallas series. And this is a book, of, I mean, a series I've always been curious about. I know my sister read some of them. Um, uh, and this is actually Nora, Nora Roberts is the author. Uh, but I think when these books came out, she let it know, she let it be known that she was Nora Roberts, and, you know, that J.D. Robb was actually Nora Roberts. I don't think there was any anybody in cahoots or anything weird going on there. There's so. actually a, a really great story about that. We wandered around Half Price Books for probably an hour, um, finding so much stuff. And we were just about ready to go home when we we did when out, out of the mist there appeared a, a wall of clearance, <laughs> which we promptly uh, destroyed. Yeah. Um, and we actually went in that, the J D. Robb book, Naked and Death. It was one of the books we went in to find, and we were really kind of frustrated because we couldn't find it. And that was on the wall of clearance. Yeah, one dollar. It was great. One dollar. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's another thing. About eighty mm, percent of these books cost about a dollar, two dollars, off the clearance yeah. wall. That's great. Yep. We we paid more for a few, but most of them were the dollar. We're on the dollar and two dollar wall. Yeah. I think we got one for three bucks, on off of that wall, and that was a hard cover. And the rest of them were, mm. were uh, paperbacks that that were one or two, one or two dollars, including one I could not believe I found. But I'll get to that in a little while, and I'll show one more here before Becky gets back to it. But I collect these um, hard case crime novels. This one's called Dutch Uncle, which sounds a little, <laughs> a little, a little creepy. You um, need, need to look that up on Urban Dictionary. Really. Yeah, I and, bet it's going to be something awful. And I'll tell you what, some of, some of these books, I, I really like some of them, but some of them are just um, a little uncomfortable. Seedy. Yeah, very seedy. Yeah. Um, there was one called Money Shot, and, and it is a... Yeah. Um, that sounds kind of awful. Yeah, it was a good book. It was really an interesting, um, violent, you know, book. Kind of like the kind of stuff I I can read, but then there are parts of it that just get way into the into the discomfort level. And it was it was a decent book, I guess, but probably <laughs> probably one of my least favorite of the hard case crime books so far. 
My turn? Yep. Uh, another thing we wanted to say. Um, we met two really neat guys. <laughs> yeah, we did. At that uh, half, price bro half price books. They were in back in the uh, taking advantage of the clearance section. So, hi guys. They were really, really nice and actually really knowledgeable. Um, yeah, yeah. Me. One of one of them was a board gamer, um, so he was back there buying board games, and uh, I think he said books for his nieces, children's books for his for some of his family members, and the other guy was uh, buying books, and yeah, we enjoyed talking to him. They're yeah. really nice guys. They were really nice. I said so, next book I'm gonna come up with is called Daisies for Innocence by ba Bailey Cottrell. And I. I can't tell you what it is about that. Well, no, I can tell you. I love cozy mysteries that have a paranormal aspect to them. Um, this is called an enchanted garden mystery. And apparently this woman's garden is, is, is magical. She's, uh, she, the, 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 the people in her village, they come to her for magical remedies and, and potions and things like that. And I really, really love that. I really, really enjoy the, the paranormal, um, aspects of a lot of cozy mysteries and the fact that it has a dog and a cat on the front well that just helps <laughs> and speaking of kitty cats i found this one it's called Ble <laughs> bleeding tarts by kirsten i'm guessing it's weiss or vice w-e-i-s-s -S. anyway um this is actually the second of this series i don't have the first but I, it was there. We can find it. And I'd really like to read the first one. Yeah. So we're going to have to order it. It's called, a, it's a Pie Town Mystery. It, it, it probably, it, it probably has recipes like right in the back after they figure out who killed the guy. Yeah. But, I'm sure it does. <laughs> we're going to stop there. My, my, my stack is dwindling. Yeah, my Your stack turn. is not yet. <laughs> so, um, uh, I got a novel by Glenn Cook. This is the second novel of the Black Company series. And I've got the first novel, and it's on my TBR for either April or May. I haven't decided yet. Uh, the first Black Company book, this is the second one. So I'm really excited. I may just put them both uh, on my TBR, one right after the other. I'll let you know. Um, but I know Glenn Cook is an amazing writer. I've also got uh, some Garrett P.I. books by him, which are, you know, a little more fantastic Um well, actually, you know what? I think both of these are, are fantasy. I was thinking, that I think this is more like military fantasy. And I'm so I'm pretty excited about by that. Um, and I almost picked this up in the, the Penguin version. They had it for like five bucks. Um, it's Adam B. by George Eliot. This is one I haven't read. I'm really excited about reading it. This is one I got to get on my TBR this year as well. Um, but they had this in the Penguin, but then I found it for a dollar in the clearance section even though it's a signet classic which I, I do love the signet classics and the bantam classics but uh yeah, i'm glad to have picked that one up and uh this is a novel i don't own any types of I've, I've never owned a copy of the hunchback of notre dame by victor hugo um i'm glad to have it i i'm not in a big hurry to read it i would, I would rather read uh Le, uh, Le Mis first but We'll, we'll, we'll go with, you know, we'll get to this one maybe late this year, early next year, something like that. And to round out my uh, mass market paperbacks, this is my second copy of Dead Souls but uh, by uh, Gogol, but I believe this one is um, a different narrator. I know this is a, uh, a Russian classic, and I'm, I'm pretty excited to have this one, so... And you can go ahead and show some more of yours. Well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do this one because I, we uh, found a, a very, very nice book of uh, Emily Dickinson's poetry. It's her collected poems. Um, and I actually found it really interesting that we came home with this one. I was talking to uh, Scott the other day. I, I read a book. I know I can't remember what it's called. I just finished it. It's a, it's a, it's a cozy mystery with that paranormal touch to it. It's very good. I'll, I'll talk about it on Sunday, I'm sure. But there was something interesting that actually kind of bothered me in the uh, uh, in the book. I, I think it was just the author kind of taking creative uh, creative license. She kept talking about Emily Dickinson's poem, the "Because I Could Not Stop for Death," as the carriage poem. 
And I've never heard that before. It's, I mean, it talks about death coming up in a carriage. It's, it's very interesting poem. It's, it's, uh, it's basically the narrator or Emily Dickinson talking about, about death, like he's a gentleman suitor. It's great. But the, the author of this cozy mystery I read kept referring to it as the carriage poem because it sort of fit in with the story that she was telling. And I wasn't sure if I liked that or not. I, I, I don't know. I'll have to think about it more. But yeah, we, uh, I'm going to read through these again. I love it. What, what, what publishing say. company is that? Courage Classics. Okay, I have no idea who that comes from. It's, That's it. I like it though. It's a it's a really nice copy. It's very no frills. It's really neat. Look, think, Emily Dickinson was actually kind of pretty, yeah. despite the despite the try your very very best not to look pretty thing at that time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she's pretty. Anyway, should I do another one? Yeah, go ahead. One. Um, I picked this one up simply because it was it was there and I thought maybe why not it's called geared for the grave it's by Duffy Brown is that a male or a female that's a woman um and it's about a, a a woman who's sort of helping a, a her boss's friend run his bicycle shop I've never really been interested in bicycle culture but I thought hey why not it's a cozy mystery it's very different it's not a, a woman who owns a, a bakery shop or a cupcake shop or a a pie shop, or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one of the, the dozens of kinds of shops that, that gives you recipes next to the dead guy. Um, so I thought that was really, really interesting and a really novel idea. So I, I'll, I'll let you know. You want to go next? Sure. Go for it. Now this is a book I was just ecstatic to find used, and especially in, in this kind of condition. It's uh, The Nature of Alexander by uh, Mary Renault. I had... Um, uh, S Steve Donahue has talked about this a few times on his channel and this is one I've wanted and I've ordered it twice uh, one time brand new and one time used and both times the order was cancelled one time the person said we actually didn't have the book and the second time I don't know what happened but, uh, but they cancelled the order and so I was finally able to get it and actually get it for a lesser price than I could have gotten it for e in either one of the other places so I know Mary Renault is a is a novelist, but she she writes here about um, Alexander the Great, and um, and I've heard that it's kind of written in a novel sort of way, but but that it is just absolutely entertaining, and I, f I found that just fascinating, and I, I look forward to reading it. The universe knew we were going to have price books. I guess. Next time will probably be second and Charles, but we, I don't know, we may go back to half price books first. Well, we'll just make a date of it and go both places. Yeah, we might do that. Um, <laughs> I don't think our pocketbook can handle it. And next is Leaves of Grass. Um, Walt, the w huge Walt Whitman um, uh, poetry collection. It, the original, the first editions, leaves of, first edition Leaves of Grass, I've got another copy, but it is a very, very short collection. And this one has two different um, editions. It's called the Deathbed Edition and the First Edition, but it's also it also has a few extra poems in it that, that weren't in either edition. So uh, I look forward to reading this. You have fun. Yeah, Becky is not a Walt Whitman fan. I am a, a big Walt Whitman fan. That is an example of Becky will probably not read that. <laughs> and I got... Uh, Washington. I paid two dollars for this thing. It is a, it is an abridgment <clears throat> by Douglas uh, Southall Freeman. It's an abridgment of his seven, um, uh, seven volume um, biography of George Washington. And this looks just fascinating. And and I'm I'm just ecstatic to get this for two bucks. And I'm I'm gonna start reading this pretty soon. Um, it, it looks great. It may take me a while. Like if I, I, I may have two books that I'm able to read that month. But actually, it doesn't. I mean, it is under eight eight hundred pages. They probably shouldn't take that long to read. I wonder if he'll go into uh, what Steve Donahue said about that about Washington. About him being about kind of a being, whiny jerk. Well, about him being less impressive than what he's actually yeah. uh, and how he's actually portrayed most of the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. We we can only hope. Yeah. It's a lot more entertaining that way, and a lot. Uh, and I and I like when people are honest. Yeah, I agree. Oh, you can go ahead. Okay, so the next book I got is Aunt Dimity and the Lost Prince by Nancy Atherton. I have multiple of her books. Yeah, um, probably 12, 13. Yeah, probably. And they're all Aunt Dimity books. <laughs> I think she has, what, she have like 30 I don't know, of the Aunt Dimity books? She's got a lot of the Aunt Dimity books. And I, again, they're those cozy mysteries with the, the paranormal aspect to them. Aunt Dimity's dead. She's been dead since the first page. Or, yeah, since the first page of the very first book. And uh, her, I think it's her, no, well, her, her grandniece actually talks to her through a, a writing tablet in her uh, study. It's really fun. Um, but I, 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 I can't get enough of these books. I love them so much. Um, I haven't gotten all that far into the series because I've got... I, ha I have a lot of gaps in there that I'm trying to fill, and that's another gap. <laughs> now, this last one, this, this one right here, this is my last cozy mystery. Um, it's number three in the series. It's Dim Sum of All Fears by Vivian Chin. And he got me the first book for Christmas. And, yep. <laughs> and again, we saw, we saw this book here i believe on steve donahue's channel um i thought i think it was this one it was this one or the one after and uh and I, I knew i had to get it for her so so i got her the first one of the series and this is the third yeah i think this is the third thir third maybe third second or third? oh it's the second oh good so you've got the first two nice uh what what i love one of the things i really love about cozy mysteries is the puns the dim sum of all fears that's so funny. I'm 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 easily impressed. I really am. But still, I love the the punny nature of, of these, and especially it's always punny in the synopses. They're so funny. I love it. But yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to getting into that series. I, I'm I'm not going to get to it. I'll I'll probably start it next month. Um, because my <laughs> my uh, uh February. TBR just it, it, it's been growing by the second. Yeah, it's it's bad. Yep. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So, um, what I I was happy to find this too. It is the Canterbury Tales, which I do have a copy of, but I don't have the Wordsworth. And this is the Wordsworth with the um, the Middle English. Yeah, we, we we've been looking for one of these. It it actually has the Middle English inside instead of the instead of the totally modern English and so now I can read both versions side by side and I think I will uh, enjoy that a lot more it's always worth reading the Canterbury Tales in the Middle English just because it it, it gives you a, a, a sense of of the time and and you feel like you were there the last time I read the the Canterbury Tales in the Middle English it was in a book that was like this thick and it weighed about 30 pounds yeah. And it <laughs> was it was it in the rare books room at at the college? No, no, I actually took a Chaucer class. Okay. In college, and um, it it was that that book was murder on the back, because I I, I had to carry it and all of my other school books, so my backpack weighed about eighty pounds. Do we still have that book? No, no, no. I th I think I actually sold it for twenty dollars oh, or something. Okay. Well, we kind of need to hurry. We're He's, getting we're getting along in this. Oh, we're we almost twenty four minutes here, so we don't we don't want to keep it too long. All right. So next, uh, Sophocles, uh, the three Theban plays. It has uh, Antigone, Oedipus Rex, and Oedipus at Colonus. And very excited to have this. Very excited to read this, um, especially Oedipus Rex. That's one of the. Uh, that's one that's been on my TBR forever. And the next is the actually the one I was most happy to find because I have the other I have the Odyssey version just like this. And I got this for two bucks. At, and there is no writing inside I take that back. There there is some there is some underlining. But for two bucks, I can I can handle that. You've got the deckled edges is pretty. Yeah, the underlining doesn't bother me. Yeah, see? Deckled mm -hmm. edges. The underlining doesn't bother me. Uh it it has a little bit of uh, margin writing in it and things like that, but it's not—it's not enough to distract me. 
It looks um, well loved. Yeah, it does. Uh, I like it a lot. And I found um, Stanley Lombardo's uh, translation of uh, Odyssey, which um, I, I will be reading Iliad and Odyssey uh, over the next couple of months. So I'm really excited to read these. Behold, an example of the worst cover ever. Yeah, that's... For the Odyssey. Why? That's, that's horrible. But, that's awful. Um, I got Ovid, uh, Metamorphoses. I, this is a this is a different uh, translation than the one I have. And I'm looking to get all the translations of this book I, I can get. Because, again, this this is going on straight onto the TBR. Um, somebody did this to it. Yeah. So... Jennifer and Nicole really liked their books. And Kim. And Kim liked their books, Shame too. on you. Yeah. Huh. Oh, well. Uh, and again, no. on this one, there really is no writing on the inside. It's just all on the outside. All on the outside. Somebody wrote on <laughs> with paint, paint markers, it looks like. And now last I know why me, it was a dollar. Last for me, I got The Great Comedies and Tragedies of William Shakespeare. Yay. Paid a buck for this. You, you just can't beat that. Um, and it is not uh, annotated but that's really okay I don't I don't mind that at all once I get into Shakespeare and I start reading and I get into the language I don't I don't need the annotations um, it just takes a little while I mean it's all modern English it's, it's, it is. you just have to get used to the flowery language yeah flowery language. So very there, fond of. there are a few words I'll need to look up here and there but I mean I've read multiple uh, plays Matter of fact, one of my one of my favorite reads ever ever is Hamlet. Um, so, I also love the fact that it, ha it actually has a Shakespeare character on the front, not Shakespeare himself. Right. Like every other Shakespeare Shakespeare book that I've ever read has Shakespeare. That's got Ophelia. It's nice. Yeah. She's in the process of dying, but it's still nice. Um, we also got the Once and Future King. I think we we by T is it T H White? Yeah. T H White. I think we actually we actually already have a copy of this, but it was a yep. dollar. Yeah. So that, always use a that's, of, that's a book we can actually pass on. If, if somebody out there wants it, let us know. Uh, we have we have an extra copy. I would not mind letting that, letting that one go. And now for my foray out of Cozy Mysteries. I got a couple of horror novels. So I got uh, Bentley Little off the clearance wall, of course. But I, I really like Bentley Little's books. They're so weird. Yeah. They, uh... I like them a lot, They too. enter into... They... they, they demand suspension of belief and just go way off into left field. And I just love that. Um, it, it, it makes it more fun, I yeah. think. And the, the policy we haven't read yet, though. No, and they, <clears throat> but they're so seriously other that it, it, makes, them, it makes them extra scary. Um, I also came across David Morell, uh, his book Creepers, which sounds really interesting. Um, I've never heard of David Morell. I've never read anything by him. He's named after a mushroom. Yeah, he's not. <laughs> but yeah, he, he's not normally. Um, uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's not normally a horror writer. He, he writes a lot of thrillers, but this this seems like just out and out horror. Yeah, it seems. Yeah, it seems it, 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 with a little bit of thriller suspense thrown in. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'll do a I'll do a a, a horror novel. Uh, review one day and we'll have we'll do a bunch probably these two and maybe a couple of others yeah well, it'll be fun but that is our book haul oh we forgot about these they had a great little carousel I had bookmarks 49 what? 49 cents each so we uh we got so many yeah i think my favorite was one becky didn't like and it was a lovecraft bookmark um i, thought I it hate it cool. so much because <laughs> it's creepy yeah, I think it's supposed to be, but still. But I, 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 <laughs> llama corn. <laughs> and I, I, I got, I buy out all the dogs, all no, the you doggies. Because I got one. Okay, so we bought out all the doggies. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, we love, we, I mean, we love our doggies. Look at that. I mean, I, I think everybody has seen Link, and he'll he'll be back eventually. He's not he's not home tonight, so. Um, but he'll be back hopefully on Sunday. We will have him in the video. <laughs> so, uh, but that is it. We we had a great time. Hope we didn't keep you too long. Um, damn near thirty minutes. That's all right. I mean, we're, I, I, I we're hope talking you about it. books. We can't help it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll probably do the same thing next time too. Um, but when when we actually when we went to Second Charles last time, 
I think we came home with about 48 books, 50 books, something like that. I filled up four shelves with cozy mysteries. Yeah, and the next, <laughs> and the next time you see us, this behind us, um, right over our shoulder here, should be bookcases. Um, mm -hmm. We wanted to put some bookcases up there, and they'll be full bookcases because we've got more books than space. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so they're going to go on onto the bookcases. We just keep making it worse. Yep, we do. Anyway, but, that's it. Yep, and we will talk to you... Sunday. Probably Sunday. Yep. Yep. We'll we'll be back with some uh probably book reviews. Some book reviews, some yep. complaints, some yep. enjoyments. It'll be great. Yep. And we'll talk to you then. All right. Bye. Bye.